Thank you very much. And thank you, Dana. That was a, that was a great job. Um, as Rick mentioned, I'm with a company called Nutrient. Nutrient's a little different company in that we are founded by the dairy industry. So 12 cooperative um, organizations within the dairy industry came together and they put together a company that would look at finding economic value out of the environmental issues of our industry. That's a very you know, nice way of saying we try to make money out of manure. And so that's our goal and we are trying to work with dairymen across the United States. Dana gave you kind of an indication that manure can change by species and by location. But what we're ultimately looking at for is that thing that Dana mentioned is a black box. And preferably it would be a black box where we could shovel manure directly in and money would fall directly out. Um, unfortunately, we haven't found that black box yet. So then we have to start looking at manure treatment systems as Dana was describing. Some of the criteria we look to look at those systems are related to, does it control odor? One of the things that is probably the most noticeable in the, in the community about an animal agriculture operation is the odors. And so one of the things we always want to consider when we look at manure treatment is odor control. Second thing is, does it efficiently control the nutrients, the nitrogen and phosphorus? And, and we should really, as an industry, start looking at the Clean Water Act. Clean Water Act was passed in the 70s. It was mostly targeted at point source pollutions. Um, those places where they could find a smokestack, a pipe, those sort of issues. But one of the challenges we're going to see as agriculture over the next few years is more and more of that social pressure to be treated like an industry. And our non-point sources are no longer simply going to be allowed to be utilized as, well, that's how they've always done business. We're going to have to address the nutrients that we use and reuse in order to make sure that we are socially able to continue to do what we've been doing. One of the things for dairies and, and poultry, for sure, uh, swine to a little less extent because of how they store it, is do we stop flies? Is there, is there a way to control flies? And really, this relates to kind of all vector control. Um, do we control pathogens? And are we keeping food, uh, water, environment safe from pathogenic bacteria? How do we, how do we address air emissions? Um, here you can look to the Clean Air Act, but in many different parts of the country, not just odor, but the actual emissions. Uh, methane and nitrous oxide are very strong greenhouse gas, um, re greenhouse gas affecting compounds. Um, right now there's legislation that's been passed in California to make a real push to reduce those greenhouse gas producing compounds. Others are ammonia. Um, there's currently a, a bill that's being um, fought about in Congress that would put the exemption back on animal agriculture and not require ammonia reduction or ammonia emission reporting. But again, if we were an industry, we would be called on to report that on an annual basis. And then things like hydrogen sulfide, which gives you that rotten odor smell, and NOx, which contribute to air pollution in areas like the Central Valley of California. Then we start to look at, okay, we have all these things that we'd like it to do, what else do we need it to do? And one of those things is somehow to help pay for itself. And a manure treatment system that can pay for itself by providing fertilizer or energy or heat or credits starts to go a long way to be a, being sustainable. And I mean that in an economic sense, not just an environmental sense. And then finally, it should be we, we look at the ease of operation and the operating cost. The lower the operating cost, the easier it is to operate, the greater benefit it has on the six items above it, the more likely it is to be adopted on, a, on an industry-wide basis. So this is an example that we use in the dairy industry of looking at our, our animals and saying, how can we make this man, mass balance? And one of the things that really is interesting from a, from a scientific basis is, if you really consider what we're doing in animal agriculture, we, we will always need to bring a small amount of nutrients in 
because we can never completely recycle our nutrients because some of them will be removed by the products that we sell. So as we sell milk and as we sell meat, we remove nutrients from our system. So we can't create a perf perfect circular economy. We can do is try to minimize the impact we have on the environment by creating circular economies around the feed and the nutrients, as well as the energy that we produce. And that's really the goal that we have. We wanna get away from more of a, a mining sort of linear economy where we take something out of the ground, phosphorus for example, which is mined in Idaho, Florida, and Morocco, bring it to the central part of the United States, spread it out for agriculture, but then lose that material that's been brought there because it leaches or it runs off and ends up in places and, and results in un unintended consequences. So the goal here is to reestablish that circular economy that kind of brings things back and, and utilizes them over and over and over again to reduce the economic and environmental impact. So what Nutrient did in order to kind of try to take a lot of this information that we have and make it easier to understand and specifically answer the question for the dairy community, well, what out there really works is we put together a team, which Dana was included on and includes others, to go ahead and look and catalog at all of the technologies that are available. And so we went out found a team of experts and started to collect the different technologies that are used in the dairy industry. We started to accumulate them into what we call the nutrient technology catalog. And what I'd like to do is take a few minutes now and show you how, to, how that was developed, what we do, and then actually take you through looking at how you can use the catalog. The idea of the catalog was to look at existing technologies that are being used in North America. So this isn't really looking at the theoretical. This isn't looking at the things that could be or that have been proven on a bench top. These are things that really exist in North America or other parts of the world that are interested in becoming part of the American dairy industry. And so with the way we've done that is to go out and actually look at the information that's available and create a catalog entry. And then we reach out to the vendors to ask them about their business and their technology in a way to gain deeper insights and to provide information that the dairyman might be able to use to get financing in the business case or maybe equip funding or other technical you know, funding through the technology information request. And then we've also gone to the point of having our technology advancement team members go out to the sites and look at an individual technology in an application and be able to create kind of a, an on-site case study. In our case, a case study isn't everything that's happening on the dairy, but it's a specific example of a technology in a single application to kind of showcase that installation and showcase that technology's capabilities. And then finally, we bring all that together, we bring that information uh, and, and other information, and we put that in our catalog, and then we provide some commentary based on what our experts have seen and what technologies are out there. One way that we provide that information is in the form of a nine point criteria, and we'll run through those real quick. This is kind of a quick way to look and see where a technology stands. Another thing that we've introduced is a couple of recognitions. Recognitions for, we just call it nutrient recognized, for those technologies that have kind of proven themselves in the industry as somebody that you really would want to talk to if you were gonna do a project of this type. That doesn't mean that it's a project that, that it's gonna work for everyone, but it's certainly somebody that you should talk to. And then emerging technologies, which are those that have the potential to be that type of game-changing technology that people should consider if they are looking to be a little bit more on the cutting edge. Our nine point criteria is really based around three categories, commercial viability, economic and business transparency, and then the, industry, the industry's value. Um, so in the commercial viability, we just look, are you on three, three farms at this point? If you are, you get that first check mark. Are you on, do you have 12 months of reliable performance data on three different farms? You know, your third 
installation may have just started. And so you're really basing all your operational data on two farms. So we added a check mark for that. And then finally, have you kind of made that for hurdle? Have you gotten past the first few and are you now in the kind of fully installed on more than 10 farms to kind of give people a sense of have they penetrated the market at all? On the economic side, have you, in, have you identified the capital costs, the CapEx, the capital expenditures that are required to put your system in, either on a per gallon or per thousand gallon or per cow basis? Um, and then have you provided us with operational and maintenance costs, the OPEX, if you will? Have you, have you been able to show this is what it's going to cost ongoing year after year to keep this technology operating? And we always ask when we talk about OPEX what the maintenance cost is going to be. A lot of vendors will tell you, oh, this is how much it'll cost for the electricity and this is how much it'll cost for the consumables. But they don't tell you that, oh, and every five years you're going to have to change this part that's going to cost that much. So we actually ask for that information as part of this exercise of getting the, the criteria together. And then finally, vendor information sharing. Has the vendor been, um, has the vendor been willing to work with Nutrient to provide all of this information that we're asking for? That's kind of an easy one to get. You know, cooperate with us, fill out our questionnaires, and you get, a, you get the point. But it, do, it does make it important that they interact and come back and forth. And then finally, the last three are, does it bring value to a dairy farm? And have you, has it been identified to bring value to the dairy farm? Have we done a case study on it? And as I described before, a case study is an individual technology on a particular farm. And then finally, have customers reviewed this product and are they, have they re received scores that would be indicative of, of a high-performing technology? Um, we talked a little bit already about what the nutrient recognized designation is and the emerging technology de de designation. I just want to reiterate, this doesn't mean that this is going to work on every farm. This means that we are comfortable that the technology provider can do what they claim to be doing and that if you're going to do a project, you should probably include these in the search for your project. And then I'm going to, now I'm going to take you on a quick test drive of what we what we call our technology catalog. So when you first sign in to nutrient.com, you're going to come to this page that gives you some brief brief definitions and shows you some of that nice clean tea water. This was not fresh water. This was actually treated water that was a picture taken at a farm here in northwest Indiana. When you go to the technology catalog, one of the first things that's going to happen is it's going to ask you for your name and your email. And it's not really anything more than to just help us, you know, start to collect some information about. Sorry, I'm a very poor typist. And I'm not used to putting this in here because I normally, oh, and then it's also going to ask you to accept the terms and conditions that, you know, that we all read in detail before we. Um, log in any site. But they're really kind of the standard things. We're just telling you how we do things. You know, this is not a document that's going to explain to you what's going to work. This is just a resource for you to see what's out there. We summarize the information that I've just basically summarized for you. We have a couple of other areas where you can go. You can get more information on the catalog scoring. Um, you can get that to that either by clicking on this box or clicking on the nine point system. You can go to Manure 101 that shows you those diagrams that Dana had in his presentation, or you can go in and you can start taking a look at the different technologies. And you can sort by the vendors that you'd like to be looking for or what kind of products or what kind of exhibits. Um, if you wanted to look at all the technologies page by page, you'd see that there are about 219 of them. Um, we're actually gonna take a look at just one of the nutrient recognized technologies. And in this example, we're going to look at an anaerobic digester. Um, the anaerobic digester is, is technology that's been out there. One of the in, industry leaders in providing this to the dairy and, and poultry and pork industry of the United States is DVO. And so this site that we have for DVO is similar to any of the, any of the vendor sites that you would see. You click on it. You get a brief description of the company 
and what they're about. And then you have a description of the individual technology. And this just explains a little bit about the technology, all of the contact information that we can provide. These links here are the links to the business information we've requested, that equipment information, and a case study. These come up as a PDF, so they can be easily downloaded and printed. I say easily, but there we go. Um, and so this is available, kind of an in-depth look at one particular installation of that technology. And then finally, down below the line, you see the nutrient comments. So there's a brief description of the technology in general, and then there's a little more detailed on the individual technology, and then the score of that technology. And as I said, anytime you wanna know how these scores, um, what these scores are, you can actually hover over it for just the topic, or if you click on the center of it, it takes you to that nine point scoring page that takes you through basically the information I just gave you and kind of explains the scoring system for the nutrient catalog. So right now there's about 218 technologies in the catalog. Some of them haven't been verified by the vendors yet. Um, we try to send out a copy of the page and we actually have a designation that says that the vendor hasn't reviewed everything there, although we do our best to make sure that that's uh, included. Once they're verified, they start the process of providing our information. So right now, about 42%, they're just a little over half, haven't got through the whole submission process of giving us business information and technical information, but 20% have gotten through the business side, another 21% have gotten through the technical and business side, and now with the next Within the next couple of days, over 5% of the total number, you know, we'll have case studies for that have been done by the nutrient team. The, uh, the last thing I was going to share with you is just to real quickly show you what we're going to next. Because our next project and what we're right in the middle of doing right now, and Dana's been a big part of reviewing technology for how they impact in six critical indicators. And this will be something you'll be able to search the site by. Um, how does this technology affect nitrogen recovery, phosphorus recovery, storage, greenhouse gases, odor, and pathogens? And we're, we're doing a liter literature review to see whether we can find peer-reviewed literature, documented information that may or may not be peer-reviewed, or whether our expert panel can, based on other information that's available, make an assessment of whether or not something is, uh, what the effect will be. And interestingly enough, there are some things that have negative effects. For example, a lot of the drying technology drives off the nitrogen. So you might have a technology that shows a very positive effect for pathogen reduction and odor control, and greenhouse gas reduction and storage reduction, but it might have a very negative effect if you're looking to keep the nitrogen from that product available. And then Behind that is a report on every technology type that gives an overall summary of what that technology type impacts are on the six critical indicators and then references for each of these indicators. And this might eventually include links to the different technologies that score high on it. I'm sorry, I just jumped off the last page. Um, it'll, it'll probably include technologies uh, where you can click on the indicator scale and it'll take you to this report. It'll have all of the different technologies that have high scores in this particular area in the anaerobic digesters. And then there'll also be a link to the whole document that will be published in PDF form so that it can be reviewed by the technical people as well. Uh, I pro provided the link to the technology catalog. I provided my information, and I believe that now we uh, are encouraged to go to questions. So I'm gonna turn this back over to Rick and stop sharing.